It's the New York Rangers 2021 offseason recap. We are already in September. Development camp is getting underway. Let's see how the Rangers did this offseason. Let's start at the top with the coaching staff. We already know that Chris Drury is now the general manager and president of hockey operations for the New York Rangers. He got his head coach in Gerard Gallant. He added assistant coaches Gord Murphy, Jim Midgley, and Mike Kelly. Gord Murphy, who has tasted some full-time NHL experience with the New York Rangers, will get his chance to coach again alongside Gerard Gallant. He was Gallant's assistant coach in 2002 to 2007 when Gerard Gallant was the head coach of the Columbus Blue. Blue Jackets. Mike Kelly, Turk's right hand man. Kelly was an assistant coach with Gallant when he was with Florida and Las Vegas, and he was even the assistant coach in the 2021 Double IHF World Championship, which Gerard Gallant led his team to a gold medal. Like Kelly, Midgley was also on the 2021 coaching staff for Team Canada. This is Midgley's first NHL coaching job. Last season, he spent some time in the Philadelphia Flyers organization as an amateur scout. He does have some coaching experience in the Quebec Major Junior League. Now let's talk about some guys that left this team this offseason. We're going to start off with Colin Blackwell, who was lost to the Seattle Kraken in this year's expansion draft. Losing Blackwell stinks. My dad liked him, I liked him as a player, and I know a lot of fans liked him as well. I didn't see too much of an offensive game towards him. Losing him in the expansion draft did suck. However, I think now this also opens up some more room, either in the top six or the bottom six, for another roster spot for somebody else who can maybe do a little more offensively than what Blackwell could have done. Now we'll move on to this situation. We're not going to go into it. I've already gotten into it a little bit. Tony D'Angelo was bought out. His cap hit is only going to be for the next two seasons at $900,000. He actually signs a deal in Carolina to become a defenseman for the Hurricanes. Oh, and you'll see a little bit of a pattern here as we go on. Jack Johnson, free agency. He was a Ranger for the one season. That's all he was going to be. He was not going to be here long term. He was here for depth reasons. We went over that last offseason when they signed him. He was here for young kid wasn't ready, such as Keandre Miller, which he proved us all wrong. He was absolutely ready. So they were able to get Jack Johnson for one year, one million, whatever it was, and basically he got hurt in the middle of the season, and he played his last game as a Ranger. Jack Johnson, thank you for your time. Colorado thinks he could be the missing piece to their puzzle. He gets a PTO from the Avalanche, so Jack Johnson, thank you for your time as a New York Ranger. It was a good 20 games. Thank you. Brendan Smith. Now, this one kind of stings. He was brought in the 16-17 trade deadline. He was a really good defenseman that year in the playoffs for the Rangers. I liked him a lot. Over the last few seasons, yeah, I mean, he's Brendan Smith. He's a really good guy in the locker room to have. He sticks up for his teammates, and I think he may be slowly declining, especially on his defensive game. However, I did think he had a really good season last year. He now goes to the Carolina Hurricanes. He signs a deal there. Another Carolina Hurricane, former Ranger. They're trying to be like the Tampa Rangers. We're not going to dive into Brett Howden too much, but he was traded to the Las Vegas Golden Knights. And here we go. Here we go. This is something that I did. I, we have to talk about. It's uncomfortable talking about, but it's the Pavel Buchnevich situation, and now he is in St. Louis. Pavel Buchnevich was traded. Remember, he was an RFA. The Rangers could have lost him for nothing, so this return in somewhat is kind of good in itself. They get Sammy Blay and a second-round draft pick. And I've been saying it for the last three seasons. You can go back into my videos and watch. I've been saying this guy's going to need to get paid. It takes slower for Russian players to explode. He exploded last year, and I don't expect him to slow down. He got his money in St. Louis. He was traded. This opens up a spot on the right wing for a lot of opportunities for Vitaly Kravtsov, Kabul Kako. Heck, he, they might even move Alexei Lafreniere to the right wing, depending on Galan's style and where he wants to play the kids. Now let's go to some key players that will be arriving in the Big Apple this season. Patrick Nemeth, a defenseman who played for the Detroit Red Wings for the last two seasons, was drafted as a Dallas star. He signs a three-year deal worth $2.5 million a season. There's not too much offense to his game. He is a 6'3 defenseman weighing 230 pounds. He's a pretty big guy. I like the Nemeth signing. I think he could play really well with maybe a guy like Nils Lundqvist. I can definitely see him being paired with a young defenseman. They might even try to throw him with Adam Fox, even though we know... Ryan Lindgren's chemistry with him is good. However, there's a lot of options for Nemeth to fit in that defensive core. And the Rangers traded for Ryan Reeves. Believe it or not, they traded for Ryan Reeves. And apparently from Chris Drury, who spoke the other day to media at the development camp, the Rangers were interested in Ryan Reeves for quite some time now. 
and they finally got him. They traded a third round pick in 2022. They already extended him one more year at $1.5 million. The Rangers like Ryan Reeves' game. They believe that there could be more upside offensively to this guy. However, I don't know. It's tricky for me because as time goes on, he is getting older. He's not a terrible skater. And like I said before, he's a guy who will get in on the forecheck. He'll hit guys. He'll start a ruckus. He's a good player to have on your bottom six. I like Ryan Reeves. I think the fans are going to absolutely love him. And I think he'll fit well in New York. The Rangers signed and traded with Tampa Bay and got Barclay Goudreau. Six years, $3.7 million a season. Now, I know. The term is long. The term is long. I'm not going to disagree with you and say the term isn't long, but it's long. However, if this trade works out the way that the Rangers envision it to, the six years is going to look perfect at $3.7 million. Goudreau is coming off back-to-back -back cups with the Tampa Bay Lightning. I love Goudreau's game. He's a really good penalty killer, and he definitely could sprinkle in some offense as time goes on. He's an excellent skater and a great penalty killer. Talk about another defenseman, Jared Tenorti, one year, $900,000. He's here for depth reasons, another big and strong defenseman as well. Dryden Hunt, a free agent who was undrafted in the NHL. Two years at $762,000 a season. He's 25 years old, he will be 26 in November, has 23 points in 89 games, most of that time coming with the Florida Panthers, and last season he was with the Arizona Coyotes. Now the Rangers got Sammy Blay in a trade for Pavel Bochnevich. Is that trade even in any way? No. Blay is turning 25 years old. He had a career high in goals and points last season. Do I see a spot for him on the top six? Probably not. Bottom six? Absolutely. They're taking a chance with this trade. The value was not there for the Rangers to trade Bochnevich for something excellent in an even return. That wasn't happening. But Blade, there is potential. There is upside. He's only 25 years old. The Rangers are banking on him to possibly complement those younger players who are younger than Blay and coming into their game. Definitely still room to grow for Sammy Blay. I'm excited for him. By the way, he has a Stanley Cup. Feel like we've been saying this every season, but the new kids. Nils Lundqvist signed his entry level contract. He posted on Instagram a goodbye to Sweden. He is in New York. He is at development camp with the Rangers. Chris Drury says in his press conference with the media the other day that he will not be surprised if you see Nils Lundqvist here at the end of training camp. Camp. We'll see how he plays on North American ice. Brendan Othman, who was the first round pick by the New York Rangers this past draft, he signed his entry level deal. He is also at development camp. The Rangers are going to try to see if he can play in the NHL right away. Welcome back, Julian Gauthier, Filipito, Libor Hayek, and Igor Shesterkin. I like Filipito's contract two years at $2.3 million a season. It gives him two years to possibly take that next step into becoming that number two center possibly on the New York Rangers. We will see as time goes on, but I like the contract two years, 2.3. And Igor Shesterkin, $5.6 million for four seasons. I would have liked the term to have been a little longer on that because we know he is going to be a great goaltender in the next couple of seasons and he's going to want to raise after that but that's just me thinking down the road but for right now four years at 5.6 is a good contract we will talk about more players and their re-signings next week in the player previews the new york rangers have had a lot of turnover in the last couple months from the top down a new general manager a new coach and a lot of new players the rangers organization sees the teams that are going deep into the playoffs and the rangers are trying to not copy them but definitely copy their game style guys like nemeth reeves goudreau and blay are all guys who could definitely complement a good game style with a lot of skill that our Tammy Panarin, Cabo Cockle, and Mika Zibanejad have. I do not see a platooning situation unless Igor Shesterkin continues to play poorly, which I don't expect him to. He is here to be the number one goaltender. He signed a number one goaltending contract. He's ready to go. I don't see Turk moving a platoon situation with them two at all, Georgiev or Shesterkin. But like I said, if Shesterkin starts struggling, we've obviously seen teams go to their backup goalie because they're playing better than their starter. We've seen it before, but Igor Shosturkin will be the number one goaltender for the Rangers this season. The Rangers are ready to take the next step in the rebuild. This will be a lot of these young players who we've seen come in the NHL over the years. This will be their first 82 game season. And the Rangers have their sights on the playoffs and the big prize. Adam Fox coming off a Norris winning season. Mika Zibanejad, your number one center. Hopefully he will start better this season than he did last season. And you have Artemi Panarin as your superstar. This Rangers team is ready to take the next step. I want to thank all of you guys for watching. Please leave a like if you did enjoy. Just a reminder, I will be at opening night in Madison Square Garden against the Dallas Stars. I appreciate you guys for watching. We will do player previews in the next couple of weeks as we get closer to the preseason. Leave a like if you did enjoy, and I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching.